So in today's lab, you'll also have a chance to practice some of this Mendelian uh, inheritance, practice watching the genes get transmitted from parents to offspring, uh, genes and alleles. And before we get into detail on this, or before we start practicing some of this, uh, we're going to use a more professional notation for Drosophila genes. So in the class, a lot of times we've just been using single letters, capital letter for dominant, lower letter, lowercase for recessive. And uh, in something like a fruit fly, the genes have technical names and technical abbreviations. And because there are way more genes than there are letters in the alphabet, uh, the actual names of genes are several letters together. I guess some of you will get lucky and get a single letter abbreviation, but a lot of these are uh, two or more letters abbreviated to give you a uh, gene name, uh, the abbreviated name. The concept of wild type is going to be important for us. So a wild type fruit fly is basically what we're saying with wild type is this idea of a fly you would just catch out of the world. Uh, you know, if you left your bananas out, this is the kind of fly genetically that would come and visit your bananas. Uh, if you happen to get one of this species, Drosophila melanogaster. And there are features that are uh, commonly found in wild fruit flies. But basically, it's, it's also an even more technical term. There's a defined wild type version of the lab fruit fly. So uh, labs throughout the country and throughout the world work with fruit flies of the same species. And they also have the same, basically the same genetic reference strain of fruit flies that is the wild type. And the wild type is usually contrasted with some kind of mutation. So the wild type has uh, much more of the normal uh, phenotype and genotypes. And the mutants are interesting because they have something that's strikingly, strikingly different from the wild type phenotype. So we're gonna be looking at eye color differences. The wild type eye color is one that I like to call brick red, so kind of a brown red. And we're gonna look at mutants that have bright red eyes, dark brown eyes, some are just white eyes or almost clear. So the wild type for any gene, the wild type allele gets a plus. And the mutant would be one that is missing the plus. So some examples here, there's a gene called ROSI that we will read about uh, in a later lab. So the official name is ROSI spelled out and the abbreviation is RY. So that RY should be a unique abbreviation that only applies to ROSI if you're looking at fruit flies. And so this gene is called RY. And if you have mutants for the RY uh, gene, they're gonna be RY like this. And the wild type is RY plus. And the lowercase RY, that uh, indicates to us that this is a recessive mutant. So the mutants, let's see. The mutants are gonna be the ones that are homozygous for the allele that's not the plus. So it can be a little bit tricky to, to kind of wrap your head around this. Uh, every fly should have a genotype for the rosy gene. And the ones that are RY plus, that is actually means, actually means a little bit more like not rosy. So the RY plus uh, means that they have the wild type version of eye color for the rosy gene, which is not rosy colored, but instead uh, brick red. So you can be homozygous dominant for wild type. You could be homozygous recessive and have those rose colored eyes because you have two of the recessive RY alleles, or you could be heterozygous and because this is a completely dominant gene, this would be also the wild type phenotype. So I like to, anytime we're talking about eye color, also remind ourselves that we're talking about phenotype. Uh, if you say wild type, wild type can refer to the phenotype or maybe more, to be more clear, you would say they have these brick red eyes. All right, so we'll get some practice at this. You will have uh, genes that you're working on and you'll have a chance to explore their uh, genotypes and transmission to their offspring. So the kinds of genes that we have available to you, uh, as I mentioned, these are all eye color mutants. 
and again they have specific names and specific abbreviations so brown is bw cinnabar is cn scarlet is st sepia se vermilion v white is w and we might have the opportunity to use a different allele of white so um, mutants are not always the same as other mutants. You can have different kinds of mutants in the same gene. So the W mutant is one that is like fully mutated, fully broken version of the white gene, gets you pure white eyes. And the white apricot, W superscript A, is an allele of the white gene that's not wild type and it's not sort of fully broken. Um, it's intermediate and it gives this, as it says, sort of apricot color to the eye. So uh, either of these white or white apricot are mutants at the same gene, uh, just differences in the kind of allele that's mutated. So this is kind of what they look like. Um, in the room we're going to have flies that are basically the same eye color. So you notice cinnabar and vermilion are very similar eye color. This is this bright red eye color. But they're mutants at different genes. This will be important later on. The ones that have brown eyes, also kind of similar. This is mutated for the brown gene. This one's mutated for the sepia gene. Similar eye colors, even though they have mutants, mutations in different genes. And then for comparison, the wild type, as I said, sort of brick red or uh, brown red or dull red, and then white, just sort of clear really to be white eyed. So um, we're gonna learn about them as a gene that has a name, but we're also gonna learn over the course of the semester that uh, having a mutation in a gene, there's, there's sort of a connection between the molecules of the DNA of this gene and the phenotype. So during the course of the lab, as you work on your project, you're going to learn more about what your gene that you're studying, what it actually does. And this also can be a little bit tricky on the first pass, so you'll have some practice to, to think about this. So if you think about the mutation, a mutation in the gene gives a different eye color. So there's sort of a functioning version of the gene and a, we'll call it a broken version of the gene. So the wild type, uh, for most of these, the wild type has the functioning version of the gene and the mutants have some kind of broken version. So a broken version of the scarlet gene gives bright red eyes. So another way to look at this is that these mutants, uh, they're missing something. They're deficient in a function that is required for making eye pigments. So they're not uh, usually not gaining a function. The scarlet eye color is bright red because it's sort of missing a, a darker layer of pigment that's found in the wild type. So as part of this, we're gonna sort of work our way forward as a class. And each student is going to do some research on one of the fruit fly genes, might be one that you're working with on your cross, might be a different one. Um, that'll be one of your early assignments. As far as learning about what your genes do, here are a couple of resources. Uh, Google Scholar is probably one you're familiar with. You can Google search that using uh, search terms like the gene name, the organism name. Uh, you might put in a keyword like function. So let's do a little quick trip over there. Uh, let's say we're looking up Drosophila rosy function. All right. And then we get rosy function is required for rosy strains. Mm -hmm. Organization of the rosy locus. So this might be one that is uh, kind of promising. All right, well, we have encountered an article that wants us to pay to read it. I think it's probably worth mentioning. Uh, if you ever run into this, I have, uh, it's possible that I already have a stored 
version of an article, you should not have to pay for anything. And you certainly should not have to pay full price. Some of these articles, they try to charge you $35 or more uh, to read a scientific article. Uh, you can get them through the library. Probably just easiest, you can email me and I will uh, try to locate one of these for you. I'm a little surprised this one is one they want you to pay for. Published in 1977, still trying to make a book. Uh, okay, so his, this is one way to look for uh, resources that you could study the function of a gene. Uh, another one is this fly base. This is a, um, a whole bunch of information put together by the community of people who research fruit flies. And if you have a gene with an abbreviation, you can just uh, use it in this box over here called jump to gene. So RY for rosy. Take us right to it, protein coding gene. And as far as looking for papers that are useful for learning about the function of ROSI, uh, down in here, there are uh, segments you can expand, summaries. I guess maybe that's not the one. <laughs> uh, gene model and products. Shows you that's not the one either. All right, what do I want here? Keep changing these up here. Paralyzed reference phenotypes. Huh. All right, sorry, I was in the wrong section here. I think I want molecular function. There we go. All right, xanthine dehydrogenase activity. Uh, some of these are, so this one, uh, these are links to uh, references about the conclusion. So if they have a function, this should tell you more about that function. Uh, some of these are, so uniprot curators, that's not super informative. That's going to be a protein database. Flybase curators, that's sort of circular, takes you back to Flybase. Um, I'm not familiar with this one. Let's check out what happens. So xanthine dehydrogenase activity. Uh, it looks like a hairy one, but we could check it out. Um, all right, so this got us to an article abstract which is a start. Uh, down here, the DOI or digital object identifier. This is a way that uh, re more recent articles have like a unique, kind of like a URL for a, an article. And I'm going to click on that and see what it gets me. Um, so that should take me directly to the article. That's handy. Uh, I don't see a lot immediately about Rosie, though. All right, so here's some. I just did a search on rosy and pulled up rosy gene. So this was an article I could read the whole text of. Uh, the XDH, so use the molybdoenzyme xanthine dehydrogenase encoded by the rosy gene. So this is very helpful information. Uh, tells us the rosy gene also produces a protein that is an enzyme known as xanthine dehydrogenase. And uh, these are references, so you might, as you're sort of finding your way to the correct answer for what your gene does, you might use this information to kind of walk backwards. And uh, you could look up these articles. So let's see what Hilliker says. Uh, urate null rosy mutants. All right, maybe not. Keith et al. Sequence of the structural gene for xanthine dehydrogenase. That could be promising. Um, so it might take some, some looking, it might take some looking from one reference to another. Uh, good habit to, good, good practice in kind of searching articles for the right answer. So sequence, this would be a DNA sequence for a gene. They might talk more about what the, the gene does, what the protein does, and so on. Uh, I think I'll probably stop here and not go into much more detail. Lots of opportunity to uh, learn about functions. All right, let me clean this one up here.